Hello, welcome back to my Thoughtful Thursdays video channel where we talk about important topics both inside and outside of the church. As always, please make sure that you are subscribed and turn on your notifications down below to make sure that you see videos like these in the future. During my DVD giveaway of Fish Out of Water, one of the suggestions that I got from people who are watchers was to do some spiritual disciplines or practices that people of faith or even people outside of faith can do. I know that I have quite a few followers who watch this channel also who are not people of faith, so I am cognizant of that as well. So all the practices that I'm going to be looking at, while definitely having a spiritual component to them could also be looked at from purely a scientific mindset as well. Today I want to take a look at a thing that people of faith have traditionally called prayer. Now I will consider myself a follower of Jesus, however I also recognize that Christians don't hold a monopoly over prayer. Many other faith traditions have prayer practices as well. Certainly people who would say that they don't have faith as well might also pray maybe to the universe, maybe to a greater common good, but they might pray. I want to actually talk a little bit about what is really happening in your brain when you pray. Without getting too technical, we have an older part of our brain and we have a newer part of our brain. Now the older portion of our brain controls what I like to think of as the caveman part of who we are. It's very basic and it is the over emotional parts of who we are. It's deep down inside and it is archaic. But then all around this deep down inside archaic brain, we have this newer surface brain. And in the front of this newer portion of our brain, we have this area that is known as the prefrontal cortex. Higher thinking and regulation is managed here in this part of your brain. Deep inside your brain, you have that caveman part that we were talking about. You have this intensely emotional response. Your emotions live in this archaic older part of your brain. Think about it. When someone cuts me off in traffic, I instantly want to murder them. Where does that come from? That older part of our brain. Or even our fight or flight response to fear or trauma is how right in this very deep level of our brain as well. It's very emotional, it's very intense, and it's very old. It was this portion of our brain that helped us to survive when a saber-toothed tiger was running after us. And we have this newer region that surrounds this archaic region, and it is much calmer. The new region in our prefrontal cortex, it helps us to be able to regulate our emotions. This outside portion of the brain that says to me, Kyle, that is not a saber-toothed tiger, you're just a little bit irritable from too much grad school this week. Don't go into fight or flight. This part of our brain also allows us to be empathic. It helps us to be able to control our impulses and it helps us to make better decisions. When we talk about prayer, prayer in many ways can be helpful because of what it is doing in our brains. Prayer focuses less on the action portion of our brain and more on the cognitive problem solving part of our brain. Those are the parts of our brain that light up during brain scans when someone prays. Now I'm not trying to oversimplify things. Obviously it is like every other part of your brain shuts down while you're praying. However, when someone is super stressed about a situation, when your body is having a trauma response, when these really deep and emotional feelings bubble up to the surface, it has been shown that prayer illuminates the portions of your brain that are good at regulating those emotions, that are good at problem solving, that are good at having empathy for others. With prayer, you are essentially taking the load off of that archaic and basic emotional response part of your brain and you're moving it over and in front to your more regulated portion of your brain. This is a good thing, whether there is a faith aspect to it or not. Trust me, you don't want your old brain in charge. It has been shown that it is horrible at decision making and problem solving. It makes rash decisions based on fear and emotions. Once again, great on the savanna when we had two seconds to get away from a predator that was running after us, not so great in an office environment. Your old brain will have you stressed. Your anxiety will be out the roof. You will worry, you will not be able to sleep, you will have trauma-like reactions. You will be reactive to everything around you. Through prayer, as these brain scans show, we can take those deeply emotional thoughts and we can pray over them, essentially moving them from that basic area of the brain to our much higher functioning brain. I'm a really big proponent of making sure that people don't get scammed in anything. This is not some snake oil that will solve everything. This is not a magic pill. Like almost anything related to learning and to the brain, it takes time and there is a learning curve associated with prayer. So please don't feel deflated if you've tried praying once or twice and it just didn't work and you still feel stressed. It unfortunately doesn't work like that. I wish it did, that would be much better and easier. However, over time, your body will get better at moving those thoughts from the older, archaic, emotionally response part of your brain 
to the newer, higher functioning part of your brain. So those who know me know that I'm fairly obsessive, which can be really good. I have laser-like focus when I go into an obsessive mindset. Of course, there's also the bad part, which is I have a really hard time stopping thinking about different things, like a harder time than I wish I did sometimes. This can lead to my anxiety being high. Sometimes I just can't get my brain to shut off at night. You know the feeling. I found personally, and studies back it up, that prayer activating that portion of my brain helps to regulate those emotions. Now there are lots of ways that people can activate that area of the brain that also lights up the same portion as prayers do. Obviously, and as a person of faith, I think that praying to a God helps a lot. It certainly helps to unload those stresses through talking to God, I can take those deep and troubling thoughts that are highly emotional in my brain, and then I can unload them onto the more cognitive part of my brain. So I'm a big proponent of that, and I know that I can sound a little bit crazy when I talk about praying to some invisible deity, but prayer for me can be deeply impactful. Now, here's something that I find to be true most of the time. I find prayer to be more helpful to me than it is to the situation itself. You ever find that to be true as well in your own life? I think it goes along with kind of what we're talking about that is happening in our brains. It is actually helpful and beneficial to me whether the situation that I'm praying for betters or not. And this can lead to lots of really great and deep questions to ponder that people who are way smarter than myself have been asking for centuries. Like this, when I pray about things, does God, if you believe in a God, actually change the circumstance? Or is it more about changing one Kyle P. Benefield? Maybe it's both and, or maybe it's none of the above. Maybe we all have it wrong. I know that when a friend is having problems, I pray. When someone is sick, I pray. I feel that it's helpful. Now, here's the kicker. I feel that it's beneficial to both myself and the situation because I love the idea of an omnipotent God who hears my prayers and listens to me. That sounds amazing that God, the creator and sustainer of the universe, hears my prayers and listens to me and wants to help the situations that my friends or my family are in. That sounds great. I love that idea. Count me in. However, I also know that people of faith get into a heap of trouble when they go way too far down that road. Once we get done with these spiritual practices that I'm talking about in Thoughtful Thursdays, I'd like to do a little video on a thing that is called Word of Faith. It's also known as Name It and Claim It Christianity. That probably won't be controversial in the slightest. Back to prayer. Maybe you don't believe in a God. Maybe you don't know what you believe in. Often people of faith who have deconstructed that area of their life still find prayer comforting because that is what they are so used to doing. It kind of reminds me of friends who I know that were smokers in a past part of their life. Even though they no longer smoke currently, sometimes they just want to hold on to a cigarette for that little bit of comfort. Remember, and I can't stress this enough, whether you have a genuine faith behind your prayers or not, your prayers still activate that portion of your brain. You are still going to see the positive benefit. I love that about science. MRI scans show that deep breathing techniques activate the very same parts of the brains that we have been talking about in this video. People who do deep breathing techniques have higher levels of comfort, of relaxation, and of pleasantness while reducing the symptoms of anxiety, depression, anger, and confusion. And I want that. Who doesn't want that? Lately, I've been doing what is essentially hot yoga. We call it hot body flow, but it's very similar. I absolutely love it. I didn't think that I was gonna like it. I went because some of my friends were going to this class. I can tell you after having gone that it definitely activates similar parts of my brain. I can feel it. I notice it. I know what feeling close to a deity and faith feels like. I feel super close to God. Besides watching Cosmos, which must activate that same part of my brain because it gets me every time, I can tell you that the most spiritually rewarding part of my week right now comes on late Sunday afternoon at the end of Hot Body Flow. It's a time when all of us take a deep breath in and we breathe out. And then my friend Harmony, the instructor, looks at each individual in the class as she says, Namaste. The greatness in me recognizes the greatness in you. There is something deeply holy in that statement. Humanity recognizing the greatness in each other. It's beautiful. Namaste is so overused in society. It's on t-shirts, it's on billboards, and most of the time today it's just used as a greeting. However, the original Sanskrit meaning meant, I bow to you. It means, I see you, I honor you. I bow to you in humility. 
I'll be darned if that doesn't sound just like the Jesus that I know and I love. I wish more followers of Jesus knew how to humble themselves and see the greatness in those around them. Friends, that is all the time we have this week. Next time we are going to be talking about generosity as a spiritual practice. I'll see you back here next week, same time, same place.